All right, this is a uh, response video to GOAT, but, uh, you know, it's on the general subject. I'm just doing a defense of an alternative point of view. Um, and his video was a reply to, um, you know, that Veritas guy who I also did a video um, objecting to something else he said. But, you know, ironically, I guess I'm sort of going to defend his position that there are such things as absolutes in the world. Um, especially when it comes to morality or ethics, um, the word I prefer. Uh, you know, you, Goat said things like, you know, there's no, you know, it's all relative, relativist, as he put it, called himself. Um, and that um, he can only see past through his own perspective and uh, that there's nothing, the universe doesn't have anything to say on the subject. There's no... There's no objective reality. And uh, right there, we're in trouble because I don't see how, in developing your own perspective, I assume you develop your perspective, that we can agree on that, that you're not just picking a perspective out of the air somewhere, um, that you attempt to um, uh, model or mimic reality in developing your perspective. You seek to understand the truth in developing a, a perspective. Um, you're not seeking to understand a fairy tale or understand as you would like things to be. You're trying to understand things as they are. And, um, you know, you could certainly argue that we have limited perception and that we can't know these answers for certain. Um, but to argue there are no certain answers that's, you know, I just can't understand that. I don't understand how we can have all these physical things in our world, all these realities, and that we're going to say that something like um, the efficiency of our existence or the value of our existence as a species, as a kind, and as individuals, that all these interactions that are taking place have no significant meaning as an consequential um, ethical or moral reality. Um, that it makes no difference how things act. It, it has no meaning, there's no judgment passed um, in terms of any kind of logical or purely objective equation that can define the goodness or badness, the positive or negative. I mean, you know, everything's about terminology and words in a lot of ways. I mean, a lot of arguments are about semantics. And uh, I'd say we know, we, we have the, the rudimentary um, components of the equation. I mean, we have the substance of, uh, of the <clears throat> the material needed to, to, to build an ethical truth, um, a statement of fact about good and bad, um, because we understand it in our own experience. We have, we perceive, uh, we have needs, and then we know what it is to have needs that are deprivated. We know what pain and we know what suffering are. And uh, to know these things, you can't draw any conclusion other than they are purely in and of themselves. Context is always, there's always an applied context to any circumstance. But in and of themselves, they are negative things. They have a real, negative, perceivable reality. I mean, we, I don't know how you could draw any other conclusion. You cannot be um, on the fence or on the other side of the fence on this point. I mean, just how, how is that possible you, to say that these are um, good, bad, neutrals? That suffering is a neutral? That it has no significance as an uh, objective reality? There's no way to objectively perceive it? and make a statement regarding its negative value. 
I, I just I don't know how that's possible I just can't I can't I mean I had there hasn't been a moment in my life I haven't understood the concept of suffering I mean I really can't I can go back to my being is the, the you know the youngest memories I have and having um, an understanding of pain and understanding it's not a good thing it's bad 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 yeah that word bad uh, maybe not maybe I wouldn't apply the word evil but it seems just as applicable it's a nasty business and <laughs> You know, once we have that component, once we know this, this rudimentary, this, this is like, it's like a, if you're doing a, a, a calculation on energy consumption, I mean, this is like the calorie, this is like the substance, this is like the, the component, the, the constituent of what makes substance out of meaning out of life. Life would mean nothing, it would be completely irrelevant if it wasn't for this capacity, this vulnerability created by this negative of um, suffering or deprivation, unsatisfied need. Um, there's just no, obviously it comes on a scale. I mean, you know, um, I need a better dessert isn't exactly a compelling need. It isn't, you know, too horribly harassing. But, um, you know, like I said, then you can go to the extremes of extreme pain and suffering. And uh, so I'm just saying that we, we certainly know, we, maybe we have to draw a line somewhere, but who cares where the line is drawn, really? The point is, is that we know it's a negative commodity. I just don't know how there can be an argument about that. And it's not something you can, you know, all depends on your perspective. Bullshit. It's a fact. I think we can state it as a friggin' fact. And um, maybe the rest of the equation is going to be a little complicated because we don't know the exact value and meaning. We don't know what the positive value of an actualized life is. You know, how much does that worth that you are born with a bunch of needs and you manage to go through life satisfying most of them and that's called accomplishment because you lived a happy life. Well, I don't know what that's worth exactly. Um, it seems to me you start off with a bunch of negative and you get yourself back to even that's not exactly a, an accomplishment. If I dig a hole that's 10 feet deep and I fill it back in seven feet, I'm still three feet down, you know? And that's sort of how I look at the negative created. If you had a flat plane of a universe, suffering creates these valleys in the universe, these holes. And the, the rest of our time is spent trying to level out those holes, trying to eliminate them, trying to prevent them. Um, but we never completely, we never do it successfully. Uh, especially the human race as a, as a whole, the majority of human beings are living in pretty nasty deprivation. They're not living very comfortable lives. They're enduring a lot of suffering, horrible suffering. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, like I said, I don't know where we go as a there's no definitive way to take all of this and, and write a moral code that covers every activity, every circumstance, every everything that you encounter in life. But I mean, the general idea that it is a, um, that, that we can assume that this object of morality that I say exists, that we can assume that one of the tenets in there would go something like, yes, um, minimize the amount of suffering you cause and that a productive act, an act that makes your life good, is an act that prevents suffering, that prevents a deeper hole from being dug, or creates a hole that doesn't get filled. I mean, that's how you have a productive life, is to, is to fill more holes than you dig, you know? To, as a net, create more fill than you create deficit and then you have a productive life and if you fall below that line if you end up creating more pain and suffering in others than yourself um, then you prevent or eliminate in others or yourself uh, yeah then you're not living a productive life then you are bad I don't know if it's evil but if you want to use that term um, it seems just another seems just a, a bit of semantics to you know add a bit of emphasis to apply words like evil, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the point is, it's, the, it's, it's like anything else. We can judge humanity, we can judge 
societies, we can judge individual lives based on their performance. There is a judgment to be made, and I'm not saying we can do it with, with adequate precision to impose uh, that judgment on people as yet. I mean, there's certain things we feel pretty comfortable about, saying you can't abuse children, you can't murder people, you can't do other things. But as you state, that's sort of a social contract. That's just something you have to, to make it possible for you to live with each other. Um, but I think beyond that, I think part of those constituents would actually be part of an objective moral code, that uh, there will be a definitive statement in the future that says, yes, this is a fact. Um, it is a negative. It is evil. It is nasty to commit these acts.